Hey there War Thunderers, this is Longshot with you again with my guide to flying the I-16 Type 27 in Arcade. It's a tier 2 plane with a current Arcade battle rating of 4.3. Puts it alongside the FBF-109 F4s and Spitfire Mark 9s. It has two wing mounted 20mm uh, Chevette cannon and two Shakas light machine guns firing through the propeller. Let's look at the armour on this plane. It has none at all. It's an early war ishak, what did you expect? So I'll switch to the internal, uh, internal components. And the main thing to note here is that all the vital components, the engine, oil, fuel tanks, are all compacted together in a very small space in the nose. There's nothing exposed in the wings at all, and that makes this plane an extremely small target. The uh, wing struts are also very, very small, and I believe that just makes them very hard to hit. So this plane's already a small target, but as you can see, it's actually a smaller target still. It's quite hard to hit. Anyway, I'll go to a test flight. As usual, I'm popping smoke, rolling, trying to roll, try that again. It rolls so fast it can be hard to control these manoeuvres. Right, okay, I've got it into a, a bank, now I'm going to have a look at a elevated turn. Now I've started this doing a bit over 300 kilometers an hour. You can see it's dropping speed down to 280-ish. It's turning pretty quickly, catching up with that smoke trail at that speed. But as I continue the turn, the speed really does drop away quite sharply. And as it does, look, I'm no longer catching my smoke trail. My turning performance is deteriorating rapidly as the speed of the plane gets slower. Lesson here, keep the speed high. If you, get, if you slow down, your plane will not turn nearly as well as it will at a high speed. Now testing the rudder and elevator. The elevator is totally dominant to the point where I totally lost my ability, my attempt to pull off a climbing spiral. Let me try that again. Okay, at a slightly slower speed, the elevator is less dominant as we just saw in the turning test, so I'm able to perform a climbing spiral. Around these very low speeds, elevator and rudder seem roughly in balance. The plane's not turning tightly at all. It's not climbing a great deal either, it's basically just hanging in the air. Right, so into a dive. See how much speed it gains and how quickly it gains it, and also look at the roll speed. Now, as I mentioned, it's got a very fast roll speed. One of the fastest in the games for a monoplane. But around 450 onwards it starts to slow down. It's still fairly fast. The rudder response main's pretty good. The plane does want to lift a little bit though, to side to side movements. Going up into a zoom climb, what I'm measuring here is its ability to recover altitude uh, both through its um, energy retention and also its engine power. This isn't something you normally do in a battle climbing directly upwards. Now I started that uh, zoom climb at around 1000 meters of altitude. It's barely made it to 2600, but it's holding on. I'm able to level it out even though I got below 100 kilometers an hour. So about 1600 meters in a zoom climb, it's nothing really to write home about. Just looking here, I'm firing the guns and notice the um, reticle dip there. It has quite a recoil, which you won't notice quite so much in level uh, firing and shooting, but when you're banking and shooting, it has quite an impact. Anyway, this is my very first game in the plane, and so it's totally stock. Um, I'm using default belts, etc. As usual, it's, it's, a, it's a domination game. I've climbed out to the side, and uh, because I actually had a tier 3 plane in my lineup, there are actual tier 4 planes in this game. This, remember, this is essentially a, an early war, uh, early war plane with all the performance of an early war plane. Uh, it just has a pair of cannons strapped on. That's the only difference between it and the lower types uh, that you'll find around a battle rating of 2.0. And we're flying against some very powerful aircraft here. So you would think that, therefore, that this plane is over tiered. That is the common. Um, uh, theory about the plane. If you look in forums uh, about threads that mention it, you'll see comments like these. Hope they don't detract from the action too much. But have a look at what the plane's capable of. I was able to boom and zoom then. Just dodge some friendly fire there. Um, very quickly twist and turn to get onto a nice firing solution on a plane. I have enough energy to escape and get out of the battle and reset. I think a lot of the problems that people have with this plane is they want to take it in and turn fight as if it's a zero. But I've already shown what happens if you turn fight with it. You'll lose your speed pretty quickly after a turn or two. And once you lose your speed, you lose your turning ability. It is not a zero, it is not a chiker. Um, a plane with this kind of roll speed needs to be flown fast to, to make the most of it. 
So that's what I'm trying to do, get a bit of height and then whip into a dive to get my speed over 400, preferably over 500 kilometers an hour. Just looking around, trying to make sure I don't get embroiled in that mess of red planes there. And here's a target I can take a shot at. Line up carefully. Recoil makes it hard to get that shot perfect, but very easy to follow his change of direction because the roll speed of this plane is so fast. The other thing to note here as well is that those cannon are incredibly effective, even with the default belts, which by the way have one API bullet, uh, or shell, whatever, and one fragmentation incendiary, no high explosive at all, and yet I'm ripping planes up uh, with absolute abandon. I see no reason to upgrade the belts beyond the default ones uh, with these Shavaks. Um, my convergence is around 300 metres, simply because I like getting in nice and close. That's just my personal preference. I dare say you could uh, fly it with a, a larger convergence if you wished. Just another nice swoop on a plane that was exposed. Very easily lined him up for a simple kill. Climbing back out, looking around as much as I possibly can. And you have to do that in this plane, especially because you just lack the speed. So my speed's down to the mid 200s. I'm very vulnerable if someone travelling at 400 kilometers an hour or more like those planes can do decides to uh, pick me out. I have to be very alert, otherwise I'll get intercepted in no time flat. Okay, this time a year two has made himself isolated. Make very careful, pay very careful attention to what the other red planes are doing. So I know how vulnerable I am while I take this guy down. And I'm heading towards the mass of reds, keeping my speed up. Hoping to pick out another target. There's a Spitfire coming at me, so I just have to evade a bit. And then a Mustang doing the same. Right, let's see if we can find a target here. So we get into convergence range. Uh, he's already down. The spit's moving across me too sharply, and the 190 also. No problem. I'll just pull away and reset for another attempt. While I'm pulling away I'm just going to keep watching and I do see someone who's picked me out. A P63 has chosen to target me and he's chasing. So I'm just going evasive because I don't want to fly straight and make myself an easy target for a snipe shot. Now he's nice and close. I can't possibly outrun him. And I'm zigzagging a bit. My roll speed's a lot faster than his and then pulling up into a climb immediately rolling back and that straight away gives me a reversal. That's not turning speed, that's rolling speed that's doing that. In, in many ways I think rolling speed is, is far more um, important in a plane, particularly a plane that can get up to higher speeds, than turning speed because changes of direction um, to me are more important than the ability to keep going in the one direction really tightly. Well, you've noticed how incredibly effective those Shavaks are. And you might be thinking, well, why aren't the Shavaks on my other planes that good? Well, here's a test I ran. Here's an LA-5 firing 100 rounds. It does so in 4.1 seconds, so about that many rounds a minute. And I timed with slow motion video the um, I-16 doing exactly the same. And it has a much higher rate of fire. I think that has an awful lot to do with it. it simply because it's not firing through the propeller. That's good to see that being modelled in the game. Here's a, a game with the plane spaded up. It doesn't make a great deal of difference, I must say, to its performance. Uh, it likes to climb best at around uh, 280 kilometers an hour, uh, 280 to 290. You get too slow in this plane when you're climbing and you'll lose a lot of climb speed. It's just, generally speaking, a plane that likes to be traveling at a fair, fair rate of knots. So I'm just climbing out to the side of the battle. I don't intend to try and take it up to high altitude. Uh, above 3,000 metres, its performance really does start to decay. It can get up to 4,500 or higher. Uh, it's just really not the best plane to take up there. Where this plane really excels is in low altitude, boom and zooming and intercepting, which is how I'm going to use it in this game. As you can see in this game, there's Tier 3 planes, 4.0 battle rating of that I-185. There's 190A4s flying around as well. I'm just taking my time making sure no one at uh, altitude over there is coming towards me. If they are, I'd have to uh, 
dodge and weave and deal with them. And in the meantime, I'm waiting out to this side of the battle, hoping that some other pilots on the enemy team decide to dive underneath and go for the ground targets beneath me. And uh, if they do, then I'll be looking to uh, sweep down on them. Just a waiting game at this stage. There's no need to rush, no need to dive straight into a furball. I want easy targets, I don't want to have to dodge and weave and uh, fight for my life if I don't have to. And there's an easy target behind me. The Hellcat's trying to climb. Well, it looks like he's already got company. Uh, the Spitfire missed. So while those two are engaged with each other, Hellcat's trying to come around for a shot at the Spit. That's a very, very easy target. Now there's several planes annoying the ships beneath me. Just a quick look around to assess the situation before I dive in. Absolutely no need to rush. Okay, let's do this. Just go into a shallow dive. I want to get above them, preferably. I don't want to go where most of the targets are. There's the B-25 and F-4F off to the left. Another Hellcat and HE-111 beneath me. I'll go for this Hellcat first. Always take out a plane that can shoot you down in preference to a bomber that can't. Nice straightforward bend and zoom there. You can see how my roll speed made it very, very easy to follow his movements. Next will be the Wildcat. Who, as you may have guessed, now is absolutely no threat to me whatsoever. Particularly as he's low and slow. There's no hope of being able to follow me in this zoom climb. I'm keeping my speed around 280, which is again the ideal climbing speed of the plane. Just gradually turning and circling back above him. You can see he's trying to reach me, which will only end up in him hanging in the sky stalled out. That nice roll speed again. It's just too easy. Used in this way, this plane feels incredible to fly. Um, I, I can't think of another plane in the 4.0-ish battle range that is just so versatile, so manoeuvrable at uh, good speeds and uh, so capable of just um, getting guns on, on dodging targets in, uh, in interception runs. Okay, this time the I was going to go for the Focke-Wulf 190 but changed my mind and I'm going for the uh, bomber. He's heading up a few more targets and he's just the closer plane to me. He's circling back. I'll ignore him for the moment. No, I'd better take him on. Thought the B-25 was closer than he was. So he's looping around, as the 190's doing. At high speed he can't possibly have to turn with me. And that's five very quick kills. Now I'm at this side of the battle. I need to just climb, gain a bit more altitude. Only 1500 metres or so was all that I needed. And here's one thing about this plane. It's an incredibly good kill stealer. Three enemies on the tail of that Wellington. But it's the Ishak that gets the kill. The Spanish actually called the Ishaks uh, Rata or, or Rats. And uh, it's a very, to me it's a very fitting description. If that's what they are, I've been um, abused for kill stealing in this plane. And as this video goes on you'll see why. Um, so to me, if, if the Ishak is the the rat, then this is a dirty rat. It's a James Cagney plane. Now here's where the... Um, of course I'm banking and firing. I'm just lining up a nice steady shot. The recoil of the guns is making it difficult, me, uh, difficult for me to get a straight easy hit on this LA-5. But he made it easy for me by ceasing to dodge as 
effectively and eventually brought him down. I had a long way to go to, go to get back to the battle and by the time I reached there I was up near 4,000 metres because I just steadily climbed as I returned to where the fighting was. And very close to me here is a P400 whom I'm trying to run down and do a bit of a shallow dive to gain some speed so I can close in. He could easily just fly away from me. But he's going into a bit of a dive himself and now he wants to turn with me, which is fine. 400 is no turner, particularly if they use the elevators. Just in the nick of time he rolls his plane over into a split S. That's one of the few times the cannons haven't served me well. I could possibly have followed him there, but I, I pulled up into a little bit of a loop just to have a quick look around me. And in doing so I blacked out and lost him. And now he's diving away towards a wave of incoming, so I have to give up on that P400 for now. However, behind me there is a Lockheed Lightning and a Spitfire circling around with a bunch of friendlies firing at them. Not sure how long that's been going on. Particularly the Spitfire seems to be the centre of attention here. I think you can tell what's about to happen. Yep. Just another stolen kill. That's eight so far and I feel like I've barely tried in this battle. So once more, around 2,000 metres, back over the incoming line of enemies and I'm looking just to dive in. The 50 is flying away, the 47 is also flying away, but the 400 who I danced with a little bit earlier on looks like a great target right now. Just stuck under my guns at the right, right moment to avoid me. And then the game did a really weird lag thing here. Look at that. <laughs> Suddenly I wasn't where I thought I was. And as a result the 400 is now behind me instead of me dropping down for another shot. which means I missed the kill because someone decides to ram him. Never mind. Plenty more targets where he came from. Including a P-47. Turning in a low altitude furball is not really the way to use a P-47, I must say. And that's one of the objections um, I've seen as to why this plane is dramatically over-tiered in some people's eyes. Uh, the argument that it's only uh, effective around 4.3, which is its current battle rating in arcade, because so many people uh, fly their planes badly. They get low and they get slow and therefore make it the target for this plane. Well, kind of yes and kind of no. See, the mission objectives encourage people to get low. This bow fighter here is actually doing the right thing. He's strafing uh, the ships over here. Of course that makes him a target for me. By the way, historically that's how bow fighters were often used ground level uh, strafing round runs. Uh, is he flying his plane badly? I wouldn't necessarily think so. Anyway, I just want to run through a series of clips just demonstrating the kind of carnage this plane can wreak in a boom and zoom run. Now these were uh, squad battles, which means there's people chattering and talking about this and that, not necessarily relevant to, the, uh, to this particular video, so I hope you, you don't find it too distracting. But I wanted to show these because they're particularly good examples. Come on, I, I think Devin's going to land. I really want to kill him on the runway. I got rockets. Can I put rockets on him on the runway? The question is, I don't think I can get there without getting intercepted. It's not on me. The 400 is what I'm most worried about right now. The 400 looks like you're broke up. Getting really tired of my guns not doing anything ah, to anything. The zero is what got me. Forgot they could turn around on a freaking nickel. The greatest weakness of this plane is obviously being run down by faster planes, of which there are many around this tier. Here I'm diving into 
uh, a bit of a furball situation to do a fast boom and zoom pass. But I can't zoom away that quickly. And you'll soon see what happens um, when pl other planes start to, to pick me up as I try and extend away and how I try and avoid that situation and survive in order to keep fighting. Is a zero all over you, Agent? Yeah. I cleared Sondo. Doesn't matter. Critical him. Turning into oh, a wait. spiral. I can still land. I'm gonna go land. Unfortunately, that spiral has shaken me off, but not the zero. He rammed me. Uh, well, is it just me left? Yeah. Damn it. Some people can't just, just can't handle being outflown. Coming back. It's a pity because I've started off quite well in this game. Well, the main problem with that game was that Sondo dove into the middle of the furball. Which game? This one. Did I? Yeah. I didn't know there was a furball because it cloud. The furball I'm doing my best to escape. <laughs> Keeps following me. Okay. Coming to hell. Watch that eight. Another example of why you shouldn't really worry about the kind of matchmaking this plane will receive. There's never any shortage of targets. And people who'll do stupid things like trying to turn with you when you're at high speed. In planes that simply aren't capable of it. Or planes that for whatever reason get them nice and low and slow and make themselves easy targets. Sideways that uh, tier has no effect on matchmaking. Absolutely it does. Yeah, I, I completely agree. I just overlook it. When I'm picking it, I'm like, oh, here's a battle rating that I can do. The creeper just keeps bringing his bombers. Alright. That F8F is the one that crippled me. Okay, so after a nice little run there in which I knocked out uh, two planes, um, I'm now extending away. Notice I'm not zoom climbing. You never zoom climb in combat with this plane. And I'm looking behind, and yes, a Focal Wolf 190, in fact two of them, look like they're running me down. So I really do have to make myself quite a hard target here, and I'm going to use the landscape to good effect, to deny those people a shot as they try to intercept me. Hey, it's it's, like, I, no, he it's, like, son. He it's son like I anticipated you didn't want to die. Yeah, weird. I didn't see him, he flew out of the sun, I think. Watch out, agents, be far I know. Yep, I got him. He's flying up, or... He's about to prop hang, so... Ah, he did prop hang. Hold on, Gren, you have a hurricane coming behind you that appears immune to my cannons. He didn't shoot at me either, but he just exploded. Shavak has a very fast fire rate. These are very fast for Shavaks too, because... Um, yeah. And now there's a P-51 and an F-8F coming. I'm going to try the same thing. This time I maybe dodged a bit too predictably. Because the F-8F got a very nice shot at me. And that's where the uh, small size of the target really does help you in this plane. P-51 also got a good shot at me. Managed to cripple my aileron to a large degree, which means I couldn't follow him and get a nice shot at him. Plus I was almost out of fuel. So I went to reload. Anyway, as I mentioned, you can take this plane up to altitude, and I did experiment that with that in a couple of games. After a long, long climb up to the side of the battle, I picked up this guy as he was trying to pick on Adornia. Soon put a stop to that. But really, most planes up here can simply fly away from you. They can hit you with fast head-on passes, uh, if they don't succeed in taking you down, they can fly away, come back for another head-on pass, and rinse and repeat until they have you uh, shot out of the sky. 
but what altitude can get you is a really good high speed boom and zoom run. Most planes, if you tried this, you'd end up flying into the mountain. Not so in this plane. Still holding its speed above 500 kilometers an hour. Still easily able to maneuver onto this P-38. And with that, it's time to summarize. The most important thing in this I-16 is to keep your speed as high as you possibly can at all times in combat. Climb at around a speed of 280 kilometers an hour and look for boom and zoom targets. Uh, the plane is quite capable of a few very fast turns as long as they're not too tight. It's extremely good at changes of direction with its incredibly rapid roll speed. Make the most of that for a few quick hits in a pass and then look to get away and reset for the next boom and zoom opportunity. Uh, there's no real point taking it too high. It performs very well down under um, 3,000 metres and that's where most of the targets are anyway. And you'll have no shortage of people to shoot at in this plane. Of course all of my advice is based on trying to survive an entire battle in the plane while being as effective as possible. I regard no planes as being disposable and this is no exception to that rule. And from that, from that point of view you really do need to keep your head on a swivel especially when you're extending away from a zoom pass because there are a lot of planes in the same battle rating range as this plane that are much much faster and that will run you down. If you're expecting it, if you're looking for it, you won't be caught by surprise and you will get plenty of opportunities to reverse the situation and shoot down planes that try to pick on you. And one last thing, never ever ever climb in a combat situation. And for my own record, uh, so far I've flown it 36 times, I've dived 15, and I've killed 163 planes, running at almost 5 kills a battle. And that's despite being rather reckless with it and flying it in a tier which many people would say is far too high for this plane. What I can say about the I-16 Type 27 is that it is an incredibly fun plane to fly. In fact I don't think I've enjoyed flying a plane as much as I have in recent times as this one. Anyway, that's all I have for you for now. Take care and I'll see you in the skies.